Tēnā koutou katoa, whakalofua lahi atu. Welcome to Taranoa Sa'o on Etna 36. I'm Ellie Tikile. Talo pa lava, I'm Lea Tilsley. Uh, fa talo fa tu, pa ie manu manu, lene i tae au fo. Ia o le ingoa le mātou poe kalama o Taranoa Sa'o, ma o lo u ingoa fui a wai lili ala i lima. Uh, as we normally do, we always start off with a prayer, and so uh, I'd like to ask our dear sister here if she'll lead us off with a little lotu. Mm. Um, just before I pray, I just want to let you know, um, at the moment we have Kerry Allen, who's a Labour MP uh, with cervical cancer in hospital. So I'm going to add her in our prayer. You know, we, we talk a lot about Labour, but let's pray for her right now and uh, for our show. Mm. So. Dear Lord, just thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you that we have, uh, that your mercy is in you every morning and great is your faithfulness. And today, God, as we, we come together in this show, we just want to lift up to you, uh, Kerry Allen. Yes. Um, her, she has a family and Lord, we just ask um, that you'll wrap your arms around her and comfort them during this time. I pray for healing over her too, but I also ask that you give her an encounter with yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, we thank you that we can uh, bring these things to you, and we ask, God, that you will be with her during this time. And we ask that you bless this uh, show today in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, as always, uh, last week the, the big... Uh, topic uh, that we were talking about is uh, something that's going to be carried over this week. Yes. And that topic has to do with the elections in Samoa, which we know will be affecting every one of us who are living here in New Zealand. So uh, let's just uh, hand it over to our dear <laughs> sister who has a little bit of update for us. Or... So uh, Edwin um, has been, he's been quite excited actually, every mm. time I talk to him. Yes. He, he, he really feels that the people are starting to really wake up, you know, and actually go, That's oh my right. goodness, we want change. And uh, it's been exciting, a bit nerve wracking yeah. <laughs> to watch it go like this, you know, in a, in a race mm. where you're just like, well anyway, uh, this week. Hopefully we will get uh, get to you um, an update of uh, where it's at, yeah. and um, hopefully it'll be a conclusion. Mm, awesome. I, I do want to point out, um, I mean, I won't say what my job is, because there are some people <laughs> who like to attack me pretty hard. I spoke to uh, around six Samoan people who have come over for uh, various work, trade-type work. And it was quite extraordinary because only bar one of them, the rest of them actually voted for fast. Mm. And wow. they were very yeah. clear about it as well, very strong. Mm. And they were absolutely saying that now fast is the one that they need to go. And I, I'll be honest, I didn't, at first I wasn't sure how deep, deep their knowledge went. But they started talking about constitutional change. They started really? talking about the expansion influence of... China and how it did it, you know, and they were really worried about the fact that land, title, uh, the ideas of legacy, yes. that it was actually being removed, and that HRRP was actually behind a lot of the problems that they were starting to see. So oh, I, oh, yeah, I was, loved it, loved it. You know what it made me realise too is that our Samoan people are awake. Mm? Yeah. Mm. You know, far more awake than, you know, what we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> than, than who, I hey? Than we've seen here. <laughs> Yeah. It's true. Like yeah. what, what we are trying to explain and, and go through now is an aftermath mm. of the decisions we made last year. Yeah. Yeah. And we're constantly having to um, face those consequences every time another bill has been passed through, slipped through, yep. passed through, yep. you know, blatantly shown, you know, that there's no value for life here. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We are becoming yeah. a, a pro death culture. Yeah. It has been put in place by Labour and it is actually Pacifica who vote nearly en masse for Labour Party. It's quite a fascinating thing to see that, you know, you've got a group there who traditionally 
we value life, we value freedom, we value our religion, we value our children. And it is actually, Labour has gone against our children, they've gone against our religion, they've gone against the very ideas of life itself, yet still you'll get quite a few Pacifica who will still nod their heads and vote red. So you're absolutely right. Now that we see Samoans and Samoa actually voting against just doing what they're told, it's beautiful. Yeah, I think that um, as we saw last year, there was a, there was kind of like a disconnect in the in in, in the logic regarding uh, conservative valued people voting in a non conservative way mm. for a party that goes against all of their conservative values. I mean, it, the the fact that Pacific Islanders are are Christian just puts them immediately in the conservative category. Mm, mm. And so, you know, um, bar these, uh, these new ideologies that are being brought up today, uh, liberal theology and all that kind of stuff, well, uh, the, th- the fact is, is the people who came into the Pacific, uh, they, they did a thorough job. Mm. They, they not only went to Samoa, they went to Tonga, they went to uh, other parts, Tahiti, you know, so um, everyone in the Pacific actually have a very common, uh, uh, common connection to the conservative uh, values that, mm. that we hold dear. And so uh, what I, 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 be- I truly believe is that uh, one of the reasons why um, Talanoa Sa'o was formed was to try to uh, help our people see the... Um, the truth from fiction. Mm. I mean, there's, there's, there's people who are out here telling what they say to be truth. Mm. And, you know, we're, we're finding out that the truth of the matter is, you know, if, you're, if you are awake, if you actually see what's going on, you actually know that, you know, they're not telling the truth. Mm. And so, uh, as we were talking about what's going on in Samoa, there is so much that we can learn from that mm. yes. because it's very similar situation, mm. very similar situation. Very similar. And as I said before, you know, now you and Samoa know exactly what it was like for those of us who uh, elected Donald Trump and saw that <laughs> Joe Biden is the guy who's in the White House right now. So, uh, yeah, it's something very similar to that because mm. uh, we see... The Prime Minister of Samoa, who's been in power for so long, he's been running things in the country for so long, does not want to let go of power mm. in Samoa. And then um, he's telling everyone, no, we're the people who will tell you what you need to hear, mm. what you need to... And the people of Samoa are, are, are finally saying, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. Mm. You know, and I, and I think there is a feeling like that here in New Zealand. I think people in New Zealand are ready for that. And the next election... I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, I have a question to you both. Yeah. With the rate that we're going with uh, hate speech and all of these things, do you actually think we will have an election in 2023? I'm asking this because you can, we've got this government who is now almost in absolute power. Oh, they are. And so mm. what say to them that they, they could change it and say, mm. no more elections, we're, we're going to be good with this. Can I just give a quick response, just as, as I normally do? Go for it. <laughs> uh, I would just like to remind everyone, this is, once again, the field uh, uh, where we start talking about the governed and the, and the consent of the governed. The government, the governed, and their consent. You know, um, nowhere does it say that once you win an election, that means that you have complete, total control over everything. Mm. No, you still have to go along with what it is that the will of the people is. So if the people aren't happy with what you're doing, they have every right to rise up and to speak it Mm. and to say it. You know, in fact, it's an obligation for those of us who live in this society, who live in this kind of uh, government, to speak out. Mm. And the reason why it's an obligation is because if you don't say anything, It'll be viewed as your consent. Mm. So it's necessary for those of us who don't agree with the government, the governed, to tell the government, hey, we don't like that. Mm. Whoosh. How am I supposed to follow that? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I should have waited for you to, <laughs> to say something. Woo! 
Yeah, fine. Fine. Uh, that is uh, so uh, true, uh, though. Yeah, and is... look, I'll, I'll go with a bit more technicality then. I'll, I'll because you know, I can't. <laughs> All right, absolutely, Totoko, exactly what you're saying, Puyava. Absolutely on point. Uh, I, in terms of that, then if I look at what's going on, Liao, you brought up a, a great question. Would they do that? Uh, they are an absolute majority. There is no. There is no check or balance to their power, yeah. you know. So we saw that, you know, we saw them uh, having a risk when it came to euthanasia and abortion. Uh, then when they crossed over into now, I think that they will flood the streets with uh, with legalized, getting high style cannabis. Uh, we know that they have already taken away those elements of free speech, the abortion uh, uh, suppression of speech zones. We know that uh, the Pua Pua has now come out, but well, I think we'll speak about that. Soonish. Yes. Uh, we know that they've got now uh, sexual education programs in school teaching your children from the age of five years old That's right. about various gender identi identities and gender ideologies, saying that your little child is not a boy or a girl, but that they are a sweeping idea and they can change at any moment. Also, Te Huri Hanganui, which basically says that uh, uh, white people are guilty of being uh, opposed to brown people. And it's quite horrible because it teaches child to go after child. Uh, and, of course, we've got the, uh, the other ideologies that are now being force-fed to us. For example, they're trying to make it so that no more gas lines and now it's only going to be electricity allowed. Uh, so, you know, 2035, mm -hmm. it's going to cost the nation approximately $5 trillion, as according to Bjorn Lomborg, who did the numbers. Uh, so... I think that they'll play it by ear. I think they won't want to, as long as, as everyone's going to do what they're told, and if they can generate enough fear, and then the, the Labour Party will be okay for a democracy to sure. occur. I think if they view that it's not going to work that way, I think they possibly could do something quite drastic. So, yeah, I, I, yeah I know what you mean. You know, I think about it was a COVID election. Well, it was a COVID election, yeah. So... What's going to happen in 2023? Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, one thing I, I, I would say is that, you know, I took a class in conflict resolution. And in conflict resolution, basically, you have two people, two parties who come together over whatever the issue is they're, they're, they're uh, having a conflict over. Mm. And so what I was taught in that conflict resolution class is that uh, it does not matter how much uh, your um, on honesty and your seriousness and your intent is your goodwill in terms of trying to uh, do something right mm. uh, in order to, uh, to, to get the, the, the right result. Um, if the other party is not honest, if the other party um, is coming to the table and not coming completely willing to, to actually work together with you, then guess what? All that you're doing is just wasting your time, mm, mm. and that's exactly what I feel is 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 taking place when we whenever we deal with uh, with issues that that uh, this labor government does not appreciate or does not like. They they kind of like give us this one uh, story of how things are, mm. and you know the thing is it's like, bro, I see your mouth moving, but I don't understand what you're saying. Mm, mm. You know, yep. because the truth is, is, you know, uh, the, someone actually said in, in, in um, uh, to try to uh, because you've got this illusion that they're creating and everyone's hearing the words and everything. And they're like, OK, this is what they mean. But in actuality, that's not what they mean, mm. because they're doing the opposite. And, and so someone came up with this test whenever you have a problem like that. Right. Whenever you have a situation where you're kind of not sure because you it looks like something that you, you're familiar with, but. You know, the way it's being explained to you is different, right? So the, the, the saying goes like this. If it looks like a duck, <laughs> and it quacks like a duck, and it walks like a duck, it's a duck. It's a duck. Re regardless as to whatever someone says it is, mm -hmm. it's a duck. Yep. And, uh, and, and, in, and another uh, proverb, a proverbial phrase is, a rose is a rose mm. by any other name. Mm. You know? Oh, getting into Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to go back to what you were saying in regards to 
the governed and uh, can we yeah. just go back to that Consent. just a little bit? Um, I think that we need to come, you know, to talk about some practical ways that people can stand up because mm. it's really different to you know, have an inspirational idea, like, I really want to stand up against uh, what's happening, but how do I do it? So to break it down just a little, there are petitions that are out at the moment um, that you could sign up and be part of. There are places like Voices for Freedom, <laughs> which is in the news right now for Absolutely. misinformation, mm. but, you know, they've got some lawyers on there who are very robust, and so if you are wanting to be part of, uh, you know, wanting to stand, stand, you know, to literally stand for what you believe, there are ways that you can do it that are practical and we can break it down for you. If you would like some more information, you can just email us at talanosa'o um, at gmail.com yeah. and uh, we'll be able to reply mm. with you. Just wanted to something a little. Yeah, I think that's absolutely good. Right? I, I think also maybe another couple ones is submissions. Yes. So in terms of that, when a bill is created and the government is mm. putting forth some of the most brutal bills and cruel bills that we've ever seen in New Zealand's history, what you can do, they still haven't been able to get rid of submissions yet. Submissions are that part where uh, a bill comes up and then they say, right, shall we, shall we vote for the first reading? And if they all vote for the first reading or if it passes, then it goes to what's called a select committee. And the select committee is when the public, the people of New Zealand, can actually write in a say and they can also say, right, yes, this is what I think. And by the way, I can also speak orally. So... You can write submissions, you can go onto Facebook, they'll give you notifications. It's quite fascinating to watch what this government's actually pushing through. Sorry, Labour and the Greens. The Greens are absolutely crazy. They, yeah. are, they, are, they are actually quite, I, I'm not sure if I would say in, certifiably insane, but their ideas are absolutely insane um, and, and horrific as well. So you've got Labour and you've got their less sane counterparts, the Greens, and they're, they're flooding through some of the mm. most horrific brutal and cruel bills ever seen. So I would say submissions, you know, in terms of Parliament. The second one I would say is, look, you know, if there's rallies, if there's public rallies, go to the public rallies. Bring that out there. You know, allow, speak to speakers. Also, the little conversations that you have, workmates, family members, you know, keeping it respectful as you can, but really question, because a lot of our people are just told what to believe, they go to work, they come home, hug the kids, and there's not much time yeah. in which to do the other things. So those will be my little bits. Public mm. rallies, uh, submit public submissions, mm. uh, as well as those small conversations that you have, those talanoa that you'll have. I just want to say that there was a submission just last week around the 150 metres mm. uh, around the abortion clinics. I actually put in that I wanted to do an oral submission. So this is the first time that I, I said, look, I want to be selected to speak. Uh, which is, uh, you know, every other time a submission's come in, I've just, like, quietly <laughs> just, you know, sent in. But I thought, this is our time to speak. Yeah. And so if you've got something burning in your heart to write a submission, just be brave. Like, just get some people around you and go, would you sign this kind of submission if I put this forward? So we all have a part to play. Yes. And I think it's it's so vital to understand where you are and that you were born for such a time as this. Mm, absolutely. You really were. Yeah, and nice. these are exciting times as well as, like, you know, what we've been discussing, just some real fearful times as well. Yeah. But if you if you stand in that place, you will know that you were, you were born, like, you were literally born for this time. Right. And uh, when things like this come up, just... Just have the courage to stand and write. And I thought, you know, I'm going to put in uh, my oral submission. And if they select me, then I'll have to find something to say, which yeah. isn't very difficult. <laughs> well, you know, there's a saying. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. What's the saying? <laughs> well, the saying is all hands on deck. <laughs> yeah. And, you yeah, know, we'll see. Um, we'll see. this yeah. is the reason why if you have never voted before, uh, you need to listen right now because there are things happening that are affecting you whether you know it or not. And so 
Uh, the, the other saying that I wanted to bring up is that elections have consequences. Yeah, mm. And this is why we've got people like Leo here, who for the first time <laughs> is going to be doing an oral submission. <laughs> well, she's trying to gather up her courage to go out yeah. and do this. Why? Because there was never a necessity yeah. for her to do that before. Mm. But yeah. now there is. And the reason why is because elections have consequences. The people who are now in power are not the kind of people who are very, very, uh, well, <laughs> help, me out, help me out there. Well, they're not very good at upholding human rights. They are not very good at upholding democratic rights. They're not very good at upholding values of life. Basic human rights. Basic human have. rights. Basic. They've removed them. That's right. Mm. So we, we come to this place now where, like, you know, we're here because we have a heart for our, you know, for our people in New Zealand. And so we discuss these things and we're really open to, you know, uh, what you would like to actually talk about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, email us, let us know, or on our page, mm. um, on Talon or Sal on Facebook. Mm. Yeah. Uh, can, can I just say this real quick before, you, before you, you, you get to that? I just wanted to say that, you know, what we have going on today is that you've got these people who have got you questioning what it is that you've always known to be the truth before. You know, like for example, I've always grown up knowing that grass is green, the sky is blue, the ocean is blue, <laughs> the ground is brown. And the deck is a duck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the point that I, I, I'm trying to make here is that what we have now are these people who are trying to get you to think that the sky is green, mm. the grass is blue, you know, the, the ocean is orange, you know. They're making you confused as to what reality is. But the truth is, is that we all know what reality is. We grew up knowing what reality is. Mm. It's time for us to start putting our feet down and letting these people know. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm speaking directly into the camera right now because I know that I'm talking to somebody. There are more of us who think alike than there are of them who are trying to change things. Yeah. So stand up, be brave. Mm. I think that's why we, they started with our children. So that whole gender thing is about confusion. Mm. So if we can start from a confusion from a young age, mm. then they will spend the rest of their lives finding out what their identity is. Well, and I, I do know that, uh, I don't know if it was him who said it proper, but one of Hitler's closest advisors said, if you control the children, you control the future. Yeah. And, and, and so they knew. So they started the indoctrination of their children in order so that when they grew older, they were absolute Hitlerites. They became very much strong about the, the Reich, the, you know, the Aryan, the, the, the absolutely fearful people, you know. So I think what's happening now with our children, as our parents still, on a whole, there are a few who know, but as a whole, many of our family, our younger, still do not know actually what's being pushed upon their children in the schools now. So I want you to know that this is happening in your schools right now. Not last year, not next year, not in terms of talking, but it's in the education system now. Under the Ministry of Education documentation preach, that brother, we preach. have shown. And so that's incredibly important for you to know that it's happening now. Yeah. Not, not any other time. Right now, your children under it, five years old and up. Yeah, yeah and the thing that, that's, that's interesting about it, if you, if you look at the riots that took place in, in the United States where they were burning down businesses mm -hmm. and, they were, and, and they were causing all of this, uh, this criminal activity, which is, should be considered criminal activity, but uh, so, supposedly CNN wants us to believe that these are peaceful protests. Mm. Uh, the, the thing that I, I, I wanted to, to point out is the fact that these are people who went through the school system, mm. who were taught this propaganda, and who have now graduated and are now mm -hmm. doing exactly what they were told they were what to told. do. Yep. So, uh, I mean, if you look at it, none of those people who are out there protesting are, are old people. Mm. None of those people, they were all young college students College uh, yep. age, ones who and also ones who have got no idea as to what the real world was about. That's absolutely right. Mm. They're being, they're just following along with what it is that they they uh, have been taught, mm. and in their the uh, in their mind, what they have been taught is that America is a racist country. Mm. 
It was a country that was built by slaves, you know? And so this is the kind of thing that's come here to New Zealand. I hate to, to uh, put it out there like that, but this is the truth. Uh, it's called critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it, you know, just Google it, critical race theory. You'll see what I mean. Well, we've, we've got it here. We, it's called uh, Te Huri Hanga Nui. There you go. Yeah, same under that one. So just, I'm not sure how much time we've got left, but I did want to bring up uh, He Pua Pua. So, bring it up briefly, and then we can break it down. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so He Pua Pua is, so you've heard over the last few years, um, you know, uh, journalists and some politicians have been, uh, no longer is New Zealand New Zealand or New Zealand, it's now Aotearoa New Zealand, Aotearoa, Aotearoa New Zealand, constantly, constantly, constantly. And the idea of that was a bit odd, we didn't know why. Uh, then they came out with new co-governance structures, which basically splits the idea of a health system in half, and it says, right, Māori and everyone else who's not Māori, you'll be put into this other system, yet everyone will pay for it. And then you saw, we also saw that uh, co-governance in terms of the volcanic cones. So now you've got a Māori authority who are in charge of all the volcanoes. The first thing they did was start ripping up white people trees, they put big grey arms in front of it, and in order to be able to get through, you sort of have to, you know, you have to go down and, and kowtow a little bit and say, oh, please, please, can I go through to drive up? These were pushing, pushing. We didn't know, understand why. Uh, ACT Party managed to bring out a report that had been done in 2019, that was a couple of years ago. Before the National Party yeah. was then able to actually clean it up and remove all the redaction. That means all the sneaky bits where they black out most of the words. Now we have seen this, this area called He Pua Pua. This is a document that is absolute apartheid. You, you think about apartheid in South Africa, so it doesn't segregate based, based on physical location or geological location, but it segregates Māori from everyone else in terms of governance, education, <coughs> health, power, uh, it, economically. So you've got this area. This is it. Every New Zealander no matter what your race or education, whatever, every single New Zealander needs to read He Pua Pua for yourself so that you can see exactly what's in it. This is the most incredibly dangerous document we've ever had. It, it cuts people up according to race, and it says everything will be cut up. And it's incredible because in the document it also says that New Zealand will be the first place ever to realise this dream of the UN. It says it states it right there. Now, I'll be bringing up very soon yeah. a full-on report. I'll detail exactly where it is. I'll show you. I'll link it. You'll have access to everything so that you can see what I'm saying is what I'm saying. But this is this is the smoking gun. This is the core of the most divisive and apartheid-type structure that Nusila will ever see and has ever seen. What can you say? Like, you you look at it, and we've seen it happen. And like you said, 2019, that was before COVID, mm. just, you know, just before the outbreak. So you can imagine they were actually working on that even beforehand. So this is even before the election, by the way. Mm. <laughs> so what were they working then to yep. bring into... Yep. So they must have known. Yep. They must have known that this was going to happen. Mm. Isn't and that crazy? 2019. It, 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 it is yeah, very 2019. crazy. 2019. And you know, and to be fair uh, to our to our Maori brothers and sisters, I, I think that a lot of times when when this government does things like this, it's their, these are their policies. This this is not the Maori community that is mm. doing this. Yeah. They're not the ones who are pushing this forward. So, uh, but what what takes place though is there is all this misdirected anger towards people from the Maori community. And they are our brothers and sisters. Mm. And so I just wanted to say that, you know, the, these are what we call divide and conquer tactics. Yes, Absolutely. yes. This well is, said, uh, well this is what's, what's causing division from one race to another race, mm. from one social class to another yeah. social class, yep. from one party to another party, you know, from one religion to another religion. So these are the things that these people do. They're very good at it. But if you are woke, not the kind of woke like they are on the left, but <laughs> if, you are, if you are aware of what is taking place, you can see for it. You can see it for what it, it truly is. Like I said, the grass is always green. The sky is always blue, regardless of what they, they tell you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Good way to finish. Mm.
Do you want to close us in prayer? Oh, okay, yes. I shall. <laughs> All right. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the time that we've had here tonight. Thank you so much for uh, every opportunity that we have been given to yes, be Lord. loving of your name and your word. Thank you for helping us to spread your righteousness, to spread your love, your gentleness. Yes, Lord, Lord we, we pray that you protect us as we go forward and stand up against the attacks from the hardened progressives. Father, we pray that you look after our children who yes. are under their power and their control. And we pray that you help us to be together and to speak life into all those who are around us. And also, Lord, we put up a big prayer for Kitty Allen. Yes, Lord. We pray that she will be saved, that she will be healed. Yes, we pray Lord. that you'll just look after her, look after her whanau, and just make sure that, that she's Jesus. in a really good place as much as can be yes, at Lord. this moment. We thank you for every single day. Every single day. Yes, In Jesus' Lord. name, amen. Amen. Fase four. To fase four.